Hello and welcome to Business Insider with Mario Taniguzzi on YYC Business, brought to you by Megapix Media. Joining me today is Alice De Koning, who is Academic Director of the Hunter Hub for Entrepreneurial Thinking, a teaching professor at the Haskane School of Business at the University of Calgary. Thanks uh, for joining us today, Alice. My pleasure. Let's talk about uh, being an entrepreneur in this day and age. This week is Small Business Week uh, out there, a lot of activities going on. Tell me uh, what the importance is of the small business sector to the overall economy, both, both here in Calgary and Alberta and across the country. Yeah, I'd love to. So when we think about entrepreneurship, we often think about the you know big sexy success stories that the media loves to cover, and you know technology, all the things that uh, you you could talk about at a, a cocktail party, for example. But the fact of the matter is, our economy has a really wide range of activities, and we have people. Um, doing these activities uh, all over the country, in the cities, in the rural areas, you name it. And most of those activities happen in small and medium-sized businesses. Sometimes it's just the owner. Sometimes it's the owner with a partner, uh, you know, or maybe a team of owners. And they've got like 5, 10, 20, maybe up to 100, 200 employees. And they're in the whole economy really important. They employ um, as many or more people than the large companies. They are more flexible in terms of responding to the needs of local communities and, and to the needs of industries. So in Calgary, we have a, a bit of a unique situation because of course, with having a very big uh, industry that's global, we also then have a lot of small and medium-sized enterprises that serve um, other businesses and that serve our government. And that's a very large part of our economy. Often people think about stores and restaurants when they think about small business, yeah. but it's much more diverse than that. And of course, you know, who doesn't love a good craft beer? Who doesn't, you know, love a good restaurant, a good shop where you can actually meet the owner? But there is a lot more to it than that. No, I, I think the number that I keep seeing out there is that uh, something like what, 95% of businesses in Canada are small or medium-sized businesses, right? Yeah, because the thing is, it's a little bit deceiving, of course, because, yeah. uh, you know, you can only have so many big companies. Yeah. It's like a pyramid. And um, what's interesting is that different economies have different shapes of the pyramid. And in some extreme cases, you can have what's called a cocktail glass shape of an economy. So you have lots and lots of these small businesses up to 50 employees, and then nothing, 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 and then a couple of really big businesses. And, um, you know, that usually happens when there really aren't opportunities for small businesses to grow. We don't have that extreme situation here in Canada. But, um, you know, you do, you do have all different sizes of companies. And the more, the closer you are to the bottom, the, the more they're likely to be. Yeah. When we look at uh, uh, the state of small business uh, today, how tough is it for uh, for people to be an entrepreneur? Now, you know, you have uh, you have rising costs, obviously, in your business. You have uh, property taxes that have uh, skyrocketed over the years. And then, of course, added on top of that in the last 18 months or so has been the pandemic. How difficult is it for for these folks to continue on? So that's a, an, a question that I find really interesting because you can't do the same thing forever. You have to adapt as things uh, go on. And sometimes the, the need to adapt is just too much. And so we, as an economy, we have to sometimes accept that a business is over, right? We just have to accept that. We shouldn't blame the entrepreneurs. Uh, often it's, it's outside of their control if an industry moves on or, or shrinks. Um, but there is always this opportunity to think about reinventing yourself. So I did, uh, I can't say the names because I don't, I haven't got permission to say the names, but I met a, a gentleman who's fifth generation family business. And when he told me the story of the family company over a hundred years, I couldn't believe how many complete changes they had made as a family in their businesses, totally different business today than it was a hundred years ago. 
<laughs> but what's interesting about it is they survived. They were resilient and they continue to provide employment for the family, for many of the family members, plus for um, you know, 20 or 30 or 40 different uh, Calgarians who work in their, in their business. That's so reinventing yourself is critical. Yeah. What do you think the future of entrepreneurship is? Do you think uh, people will still want to flock to this area and be an entrepreneur or the, or has the last year and a half scared a lot of people off? I think it scared a lot of people off in especially like hospitality industry. Yeah. And of course, the oil and gas situation had an also a ripple effect within oil and gas. But the fact is that other companies did really well. So we have companies starting, for example, in medical devices. Um, University of Calgary, for example, has a lot of great work being done in medical devices because we have this bio medical technologies program, both graduate and undergraduate. And so these, these things are growing. Um, it, the IT sector is growing. What's so beautiful about companies that are doing apps or um, you know, other kinds of platforms, um, th their customers are global. So we, you know, we have the inspiration of Benevity that you know, is located downtown Calgary, but serves the world in helping um, you know, different companies, a, the uh, human resources areas of different companies to offer certain services and um, to, to support those, uh, those businesses. And there's no limits to that. And the interesting thing is that at the same time, we hear the sad stories about the restaurants and let's face it, it is sad. And it is um, difficult what's happened to people who sort of committed their careers to that industry. But at the same time, we have tech companies here in Calgary that are desperate to hire and can't get people to apply for those jobs. Or if they're applying, they're also applying and leaving the province for somewhere else. So there is a lot of opportunity, but it's not always the same in every sector. Yeah, exactly. So what does it take to be an entrepreneur, especially today? I think the most important thing is um, to, to not believe the mythologies that you see uh, in the feature sections of uh, flashy magazines. <laughs> um, in the end of the day, entrepreneurs are people who are hardworking, um, who, who want to create something of value for their communities or for their industry. And um, they're not afraid of taking chances. To me, the most interesting thing about entrepreneurship as a field, and of course, I come at this mostly as an academic, but what I like most about it is that when we see a problem, we don't say, oh, the government should fix that, or this big company should fix that, or we should you know, do X, Y, Z. The, the actual response of an entrepreneur is, I could do something about that. And then that could be a business or, you know, a, you know, maybe not a for-profit, I'm going to make a million dollars business, but still an operation that can support itself and serve the community in some way. Yeah. What do you think the lure is of being an entrepreneur? Mostly, okay, there's different motivations for different people, but uh, for some people, it's because I can do what I think is important, you know, so they come up with an idea, their employer isn't interested in that idea, and so the only way they can pursue it is if they start their own business. Mm. Um, for other people like immigrants, so I grew up in an immigrant family, this was very true in my family, um, you have credentials from another country, those aren't recognized, your work experience from another country isn't recognized, you yeah. can't get the job and the pay that you're worth. But if you started your own business, all your customers care about is, can you deliver? Can you create value? Can you deliver? And so when my father finally started his own business, thankfully with the encouragement of people around him, um, his income doubled in his first year of business. And you know, maybe my father was lucky that that turnaround happened so fast, but that's a major motivation for um, what we call necessity entrepreneurs, where their best opportunities are creating their own business and working for themselves. Yeah. So there, there's really like different, you know, some people it's driven by vision and a desire to create something or solve a problem or whatever. And for others, it's really their best career option. Yeah. How many businesses 
you know, and I know this is a hard thing to quantify, but it's just kind of uh, in general, how many businesses do you think give up too early? Oh, this is such a hard question. So uh, we have these, you know, P's that we talk about in the field. We talk about pivoting, persisting, um, and then, you know, sometimes you just have to walk away. Yeah. <laughs> um, and part of me says uh, we don't have enough failures in our economy because we um, allow people to persist and we give them grants and we give them support. So I'm now I'm talking about the new tech startups, not the sort of typical SME startup. Yeah. And I think um, that's a problem in a way because sometimes you need to say, okay, I had this idea. I didn't do a very good job of finding customers and connecting to customers. Maybe my idea wasn't that good and I need to pivot or maybe just abandon this project and start all over on something else. Yeah. Um, if you can connect to the customers, but it's just like really hard to do. So um, for example, if you are doing something in the medical field, there's just a lot of regulation. If you're doing something in cannabis, there's just a lot of regulation. Yeah. Uh, anything related to say, oil and gas and other energy things, because we have the environmental concerns and none of us would want them to not take care of that, those regulations, but that's going to take more time. So yeah, persistence is a very useful thing in an entrepreneur. Uh, but then you kind of have to balance it out to, in this industry, what's kind of a norm. So I, I uh, know this story about this guy, of course, it, it's, it's an old story, but it's a good illustration, who was um, against the cruelty to chickens in, um, that are in sort of factory farms. I hate using that term because it's so pejorative, but um, they... For safety reasons, they um, have to clip the, the beats sometimes. I think there's new technology now, but now I'm talking 40 years ago. So this guy invented um, contact lens for chickens that would keep them calm because the lighting would be low, et cetera. He persisted for 20 years with this idea, but it wasn't going anywhere. So he so believed in his idea, but he had no customers because it was too complicated. And he should have quit after three or four years. He should have figured out after three or four years, this is going nowhere. Maybe what I need to do is sell red light bulbs <laughs> that would create the lighting situation in the barns that would then keep the, the birds calm. Like he just got stuck on his solution instead of being stuck on the problem he's trying to solve and then adapting. Yeah. All right. Super then. Well, thanks very much, uh, Alice, for joining us today. Thank you. It was fun. All right, super. That was Alice de Koning, who is Academic Director of the Hunter Hub for Entrepreneurial Thinking and a teaching professor at the Haskane School of Business at the University of Calgary. This has been Business Insider with Mario Taniguzzi on YYC Business, brought to you by Megapix Media. Thanks for joining us. <laughs>